So the alkanes really don't do much chemistry. We can burn them, but apart from that, they don't do. Why do you think the alkanes aren't very reactive? They're quite stable. They're saturated. They're stable, they're saturated, but what... What causes, what can you say about the bonds? Carbon and hydrogen have very similar electronegativity. Non polar, non yeah. They don't really attract anything. Alkanes, carbon hydrogen bonds, and carbon carbon bonds are strong. They don't, so we can burn them, but apart from that, they don't do much. The one thing they do do is they undergo substitution reactions with the halogens. So we're going to do the simplest one. So if I take methane, and I react it with chlorine gas in the presence of UV light and often you can just do this in sunlight you make CHCl3 plus HCl this guy would be oh no, CH3CL this guy would be chloromethane so I've replaced one of the hydrogens with a chlorine atom. Now, that's fine, okay, so that's an equation you need to know, but how does that reaction actually occur? So we're gonna talk it through step by step and then we do it. This goes through three steps and it's called free radical substitution. And the first step is an initiation step and that's how I need the UV light. The first step in this reaction is called the initiation step. The initiation step involves a Cl2 molecule splitting up to give me two chlorine atoms. Now they've got an unpaired electron, we call them free radicals. Free radicals are really reactive, they're chlorine atoms. So we represent a free radical by just dropping a little dot like that. That is a free radical, it's got an unpaired electron. So if you can do that, your chlorine molecules generate a free radical. The next steps are called propagation steps. Now there's two of these that happen. The first propagation step is I bring in my methane, CH4, and he meets one of these chlorine free radicals. This chlorine free radical bumps into this methane molecule. As you hit your chlorine free radical into it, what's he gonna see? He's gonna see hydrogen atoms, isn't he? He's really reactive, he rips one of those hydrogen atoms off of methane to give me HCl. But that means I end up with a CH3 free radical like so. The next step is still a propagation step is that CH3 free radical meets a chlorine, another chlorine molecule that's knocking around, Cl2, to give me CH3 Cl plus Cl dot. So these propagation steps are really important. So I've got two problems. So the first one is I use up a chlorine free radical, but in the next step, look what I've done. I've generated it again. So this can cycle, keep on cycling through. So every time I use one, the next step I regenerate one. So it keeps cycling through this many, many times. So once I've got a few there, it will keep, I use one, another one's produced. That's one of my products, that's the other product. So I get a molecule meets a free radical, and another free radical is produced. That free radical is used up, but another free radical is produced. It's this side. However, what could happen in theory, remember this is all happening at the same time, it's all in the same pot, that boy and that boy could meet. And that would be what we would call a termination step. If a CH3 free radical meets a Cl dot free radical, it produces CH3 and Cl. Why do you think that's called termination? Yeah, I've used up two free radicals, so I've stopped that cycle happening. 
So the two product, the two products that I make overall are HCL and chloromethane. In your pot, you have got, if we look at the free radicals that we've got in our pot, we've got Cl dot and we've got CH3 dot. In one termination step, my CH3 dot met with my Cl dot to give me chloromethane. Can anybody suggest another termination step? Uh, two chlorine free radicals. Two chlorine, that just gives me, oh, two chlorine free radicals meeting just gives me back one of my reactants. What's another one? Two yep, two methyl free radicals meet. And if two of them meet, you make C2H6, which is of course ethane. So as a byproduct, you'd also make ethane as well. So as a minor product. So free radicals are really difficult to control. Once you start them, um, you only stop them by termination steps and you also get other products produced. If we now deal with propane, things start getting interesting. I'm going to make the same product without getting two. So the initial step is you're going to just replace one of the hydrogens with a chlorine and make HCl. However, let's try and think about the different products we're going to make. So you've built your propane like so. One of the products is C3H7Cl. If you replace one of those hydrogens, it could go there or it could go there. So out of that reaction, you've got two isomers. You will have one chloropropane, but also you could make two chloropropane. What other products could I make out of there? Did you have like chloroethene? No. So let's go through the free radicals that I'm going to have in my pot. I'm going to have Cl dot and I'm also going to make CH3 7 dot. So what's the termination step involving two of those? C6H14. Yep, so I could make C6H14 as well by two of these come together. Yeah. Once I've made that, remember this, the reaction's still going. So I've got now six carbons in a row. Reaction's still going, so substitution could also react, happen on this guy. So I could replace that hydrogen, that hydrogen, or that hydrogen with Cl as well. So you get a humongous range of products happening. Um, so you could have a Cl there, you could put a Cl there, or you could put a Cl there. Obviously putting it there is the same as putting it there as well. So free radical substitutions, they go when you get them to go through UV light, but they give you a whole mixture of different products. Obviously this would be in a very tiny, this would be very tiny amount, you wouldn't get huge. That's a very good point, yeah. You can also have different, so you may get to the stage where um, you could have C3H6Cl2 being produced, but also you could have two chlorines on that or three or, you know, you can just get a full range, but obviously the, it's all based on probability about how many molecules you've got at the time.